this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> Not like the one we did yesterday, which went pear shaped. <clears throat> anyway, we'll start again. Ooh, look, it's so hot, all my reference images are gone curly whirly. Um, I've got three different images that I've sort of based my little, that's quite a nice one, sort of a nice light effect, bit evening, sort of early morning perhaps, I don't know. Um, this area around here is a bit vague, so it's a question of making it, making it up. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> you wouldn't guess that that was there, never mind. Um, what I've done is I've used the black one, black and white, as a sort of guide to the shadows and tonal values, which I'm going to kick off with in a minute. I've spent a good half hour or so, well, maybe not half hour, 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, make up your mind. Um, just sketching it out, trying to find some sort of, it's nothing special, just a little, just a few lines, because um, the way I'm painting pictures these days is based on it, it's almost the same as we do in the portraits, adding, incorporating white and um, utilizing the, the, the white gouache, and then later on when it dries, we can still affect and play with smooth the image out the, the painting out and it's amazing and what effect it i'm still using this my little ooh, some yucks gone into my white can't be doing with that i've just got a little blob of white there a bit like a slug trail this palette's not very what it is I've put um, water in to hydrate it and it's really has because it's so hot here today that I've been trying to hydrate my paints keeping on that anyway and we've got and I've, as I said um, earlier been playing with cotton balls so <laughs> cotton ball balls so that will um that will become interesting towards the end it's just different way of um actually the hint is foliage trees nobody likes doing trees just ask joyce <laughs> not that keen myself to tell if they always come out slightly doodah so kick off, I think we'll, we'll find a nice sky. Yesterday I was doing this and I, my plan was to use cerulean blue and I thought that was cerulean blue there, but it's, it's not quite the blue I was aiming for. I wanted a nice sky blue. Fortunately, I've got these St. Petersburg paints and lo and behold, there's a nice couple of pale blues there that I'm going to utilize in this sky area. I need more space. I need a bigger room. Don't tell, don't tell Melanie, my wife. She'll go mad. Right. Da, da, da. So no mucking about. I'm going to dampen the... I've got my mop brush and I'm just going to make the sky area a little bit damp. Good thing of these mops, they've got a little pointy, they're quite pointy, so you can just put a trickle of water in any awkward spaces. <laughs> I did put a little glaze of white over this paper because it's, it's not real watercolour paper, it's just white card really, board they call it, I call it 
white card, call it what it is. So just grab some of this, this blue, and I'm not, ooh, ooh, see what I mean? It's strong, strong. It's, it's gonna have to blend it in, I'm afraid. The good thing about watercolors is it dries. When it dries back, you get that lovely, subtle, on this particular paper, it can't hang about because it's quite absorbent, what I can feel. You can feel it as you're painting. Let's grab a little bit more. Actually painting with my right hand. And I'm left-handed. How scary is that? Try and get an, I think I... Reference image, we want the sky darker in the fresh water. Keep the brush, keep, try and keep it moving. Darker at the top than it is at the bottom, so I'll load a bit more paint on. I'm going to stick with this single colour. Try and it's, a new, it's always a um, <laughs> cautious event when you've got a new paper. You're trying to pay, trying to use a lot of music. Look at this, ambidextrous again. I'm hardly touching the paper with the brush now. It's just trying to get it to blend nicely. Not far away. I'll go towards the castle from the edge. If I get a few little white streaky bits, all the better. It's a little sort of run back there, isn't there? Yep. I think I'll go with that. I want the castles what we want to stand out so concentrate on that it's a bit dark there mm, it's quite an interesting blue that just let that tease it while we're at it have a look at our reference image and there are some shadowy areas in the lake i'm assuming it's the lake so i'll put some Put some shadow in there while I'm at it. It's brilliant blue, that water reflection. Not going to match that, that's for sure. I haven't got, if you've, if you've got it, use cerulean blue. You'll get a much better result than I have. Just put a bit under there on the bridge. Um, yeah, because that's water over there. Just have a look for any dark areas of blue, especially where it's going to poke through some trees. Sorry, I'm singing. I must be happy. I will let that um, settle. If I do get any streaks, I'll just add a little bit of tidy up with some white just let that settle down and then we'll come do some more it's quite nice for a change actually doing the <clears throat> just a really simple sky with no you know extra colors and washes in it my next stage my next plan. So I'm going to use this flat brush. Da, 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 mix up a bit of a sort of burnt, I think that's burnt umber here. Yeah. A bit of burnt umber. There's traces of white in there from an earlier adventure in that, which makes it a bit too creamy. Let's add a bit of water. I always use the um, 
yeah the, the edge as you know right now just going to look at the picture and possibly start from the I think I'll start from the top and just look for some some shadows if I use the I'm going to use the black and white reference image for this and I'm just oops try and get it stand up yeah and uh, I'm just going to look for any areas that are dark obviously the these points tend to be dark just dab it oops dab it on could do a thinner brush Just use the edge. Mm, it's not working, is it? No mind. Just find them. I should have painted it on with a bit more of an edge. Because that bit goes up there. And that bit goes up there a bit more. That'll do. And I've got this. Really, we're looking for a sort of shadowy. Trying to establish the some dark areas. We've got all these little nodules. That we've got. Just don't want to lose them, so I just want to oops, one there, not there. Just put a few in. Some over here. Usual thing, try and paint with your arm, not your fingers. You'll find you'll get quite accurate with that. It's just a mix of blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of raw sienna. Sorry, burnt sienna. Raw sienna is a yellowy colour. <laughs> Close. Yeah, as I say, I'm just trying to establish some. Just looking at the black and white image and saying, well, that looks dark, that looks dark. <laughs> If you get too much on the brush like I just did, just uh, take the edge off over here. I'm not sure about this area here. I'm going to have to look at the other reference image. That area, that line is definitely, it can take quite a while actually. It's worth spending the time. even use a rigger if you like. I've got a chair here, I'm just going to move it. Definitely some sort of shadow area there. Okay, um, just happy basil, yes. Helps me get through the day, dear. It's definitely shadowy here. Forgot about this bit. It's definitely where that door area is there. Sort of just want to establish where they are. Otherwise, when I come to paint. Some more colours, they'll all disappear. <laughs> you can use a smaller brush. I've got a pointy one here somewhere. But, um, or a rigger even. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, really. You might find with the pointy one you can get more accuracy. But again, try and paint with the with your arm, not your... Not with your hand, you'll find it if you long you been out on the brazzle the night before you'll get a nice what we're looking for are sort of areas of t we're trying to, uh, areas of tone really 
just a, sort of a tonal map of the picture. I don't know why, but I can see something there. I don't know where the colour, I've got a colour picture here somewhere, this bit takes a bit longer than... I just want to have a look at my colour one. Ooh, talk about getting in a mess, in a pickle. Yeah, just to find out there's always definitely going to be a dark area just under the bridge. And there's a shadow. Oh, I see what I did. I put the shadow in the wrong place. <gasps> Unforgivable. Unforgivable. That's what I am. There you go. Let's I'm back on track now. Anyway, whichever reference picture you choose, stick with it. Don't do what I did. Just trying to pick them out. Anywhere where I can, I can see. Um, some shadowy areas. Oops, some sort of dustman coming down my road. Picking that up. Really all I'm doing is deciding where I'm going to put tone uh, right there, there's a bit tonal information, as I always call it. Lately, I'll just call it information. Where the ends of those wall areas are, there's a tone. It's worth spending a bit extra time. And as it dries, it eases off. You can. Not too strong. If it's too strong, just tap it off. Get it right and you'll get the castle rotating, you know, give it a bit of curvature. I forgot about the, the um, bricks as well. The chances of finding, let's put a few dark lines in. That's got to be white there, I don't know, I shouldn't have done that. Well, eventually you can tease the castle out and it'll, it'll all become clear in the end. <laughs> Seem to be um, getting on well with this pointy gear brush now as well. But I'm still conscious, I'm trying not to paint with the, my fingers. Just paint with my with my arm. See any nice shadowy bits? Can always touch. We'll touch it up at, towards the end of the rigger, and so don't be too nervous about Um, too nervous about losing a bit of your image or something. It's an art, it's a piece of artwork, not a not a photo. The photo is what I'm looking at to do the to do mine. Kind of a, a little bit. Down there. Mm -hmm. Still. Just gonna dab in some some bricks if I can. Seems to have a shadow area. Something going on down here. 
that's not. This is the second painting I've done of this in two days. And I bet you, I'm not looking at the other one, but I'm pretty 100% sure they won't look anything like each other. <laughs> Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so what I want is that to go there. Yep. That's fine. I'll put a bit of extra blue down there. Get in there. As I say, it's worth taking a little bit time and by doing this you actually get a full feel and for your painting some shadowy areas here and where the trees are I'm gonna block them in while I'm at it mm -hmm. why not just look for shapes. If you see a, a triangle or a... Just going to put a few there. Still like this bit. A bit darker there. <laughs> See if we can get... There's definitely a good shadow line here that I can take right the way down. Can you see what it is yet? <laughs> no, nope. that's good. You can always lift paint off, don't forget. Uh, find a bit of tissue that is, which I can't. Good artist always has a bit of tissue next to his next to his work. Leaves me out then. <laughs> it's a bit dark, that's all. Just take a bit of it's beauty of watercolour, we can lift it off. And that this area piece here, which I wasn't happy about. I'm gonna lift that off. Didn't want the shadow there. It's just clean water on the brush now. And I'm just manipulating the any anything I see as a shadow. I think I'll paint that tree in over here a bit. Um, I think I'll, where do I want it? Sort of about here. Yeah, goes right up in the sky. Well, let's just do his. Do his um, main branch. There's a main branch goes up there. And there's another sub branch that goes up there. Just doing it really light, just to. So that I can spot them in a minute. I think that one might be a bit too strong. But... And there's a one that goes off around right that way. One that goes off there. I'm just trying to pick out the main branches. And we've got yucky shadowy bits around there. What a mess. What a mess. Maybe. Well, or is it? There's no real detail on it at the moment. Hmm. Next day, just to build up some tone on that castle and start introducing a bit more colour. Ah, oh, looks good on the screen. <laughs> Any... I keep saying this meeting's being recorded. Right, my next plan, next section, is to have a look at the 
maybe try and build up some of the castle using the, the nice flat brush. Got about these two reference images, they give me a different colour on each one. I don't know what they're doing on that nice little flat brush now. There it is. The colour I'm going to um, just mix up a bit of flesh. I've got flesh. Um, didn't mean to do that. These brushes don't seem to clear out very well. But I've got some little bit of flesh colour, so I'm going to use it. But if you haven't got flesh, make your own. Get a bit of red. That's crimson, but it's red. To me, it's red. And add some yellow. And voila. Just keep adding a bit more yellow and it will go nice and fleshy colour. If you want to be exciting, just add a bit of white to it. And you can tone it down. Might be an idea while I've got that to just go back over, get your pointy brush. I'll just add a bit more fun here and there. You can always have fun with colour, don't get stuck. I'm still looking at those sort of shadowy areas. And using my painting with my arm. So this is a darker tint tone, call it what you like. You can find some of the um, some of these bricks. I see a few dark ones, just add them. There's no way we're going to sit here painting bricks. <laughs> these walls down here, these. Got some lovely bricks in there as well. They're all different shapes and sizes. Just going to put a few lines in to remind myself if there's something there. Nice light. Just going to use my flat brush, wasn't it? Let's get the nice flat brush on that. Still got bits of blue in it. Uh, the burnt umber or whatever colour it was. Now just look for tonal values, exactly the same as we were doing with the darks and just might be a bit dark this have fun with colour Quite like a beige castle. Nice colour. Probably have to get my pointy brush out again in a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Good thing about the using a flat one, you can get really nice straight lines with it. It's just a little bit, adding a little bit of white to it to tone it down a bit. If anything, we can add some more shadow in this area. And on the bridge. Just let that dry back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's all we're going to do now, is gradually build up. bit of fun with colour. If you want to mix up some grey, a bit of burnt sienna, and add some blue, whoosh, you get a nice greyish tan. Burnt sienna and a little bit of blue. Just tone it down with some water. Bear in mind there's a lot of foliage up here. So I'm just teetering in it. Just diddling a bit of shadow in here. Mm -hmm. It's always a battle, isn't it, between light and dark, the eternal struggle, never ending. Still going. Pull out a little bit of this here. Turn it down with a little bit of water. For a minute. Just want to make sure that I don't forget to put it in at some point. It's nice and dark in here. Still can't make up my mind if I'm better with the the round pointy brush or the flat one. I'm just having fun with the colour at the moment. So much shadow here that it sort of all blends into one. Let's fucking use this nice straight bit in there. It goes a bit pointy, doesn't it? This this brush, this flat one, it forms two points, the little teeth, so you can just, <laughs> which part of it am I going to use now? It's fine. Just going to put a little line there. Mm -hmm. Back to the um, top bit now, add a bit of strength to this. Again, try and paint with your arm, not your, not your fingers, so move your whole. I'm just using that brush as a
good thing about using this this sort of technique is <clears throat> perhaps tomorrow when it's dried off, go down a bit there, you can feather with a dry brush. You can just sort of feather this colour into that and make it really subtle and smooth. Just add a little bit of shadow tone to that. It's coming. Just slowly build it up and dress the colours. You have, just have fun with the colour. You can use a little bit of that grey if you want and add it in. Perhaps when that was just burnt sienna and some blue. Brush is drying out quite quite well now, quite quite a lot. Too much. And then it's just a matter of adding. Some light areas to just bring it back. That's the the old term, isn't it? A bit like watching paint dry. In this case, I think it is. But I can't stress enough really to, that it's not a photo. Just have fun with the paint. And if you oh, yeah, let's see what I've done. Okay, you can always come back. Do what I'm going to do now, and that is to no, not turn me picture up and run away, but come back. Just walk away. Let it let it dry off. So as this brush is dry, and then come back and have another another go. Especially if, if you're going to add a bit of like I'm going to do in a minute, add some white. You want it to dry off so that you can add, add it on top without disturbing the colours underneath. So it's, it's almost like you're glazing, to say. Be interesting to see how different this one is from the one I did yesterday. Paint's dried. So hot, all the paint's drying as I'm. It's drying a bit too quick. So that bit there is annoying. slowly take shape. So it's very much like well, painting this way. It's very much like um, doing a portrait. You gradually build up your layers and using this sort of way of introducing the white. You can just subtly just feather it ever so lightly with the brush. And as it dries, you'll find that um, the bricks sort of turn up and you can just enhance it without having to 
There's no way we're going to sit here and paint all the bricks. The other thing when you're painting these, well, any painting really, is especially watercolour. When it dries, it doesn't have, you know, things change so much. So that's got, um, I'll find a bit of darker colour. It's definitely, maybe it's a sort of grey, light grey. This bridge has definitely got bits of, it's toning down now. I haven't forgotten about that bit. So I'm, I'm using the, the forkness, if you like, of the brush. It wasn't planned, but it just turned up. So I'm just using it to perhaps stick a few bricks in. If I use a dark colour, Bit dark on that even, which was the burnt amber and blue that I'd mixed up over here from a previous painting. Mm -hmm. I can make that lighter in a minute. Use the edge to make that look like the edge of the wall, the bricks. Take the finer edge off the brush colour. Let's put a few dabs of paint in there. So I'm just, just resting the brush really on, so I'm going to do this and then let it dry off, then I'll come back. Just want to, the only reason I do it like this is so that I <clears throat> had a few detail-y areas, otherwise I'll, later on I'll forget them there. Use the pointy brush on it later. I think, oh, I think I will put a bit of a bit of shadow bit there on that bit. Well, I'm just gonna tease itself off. Meantime, I'm gonna add some raw sienna. Sort of a, still using this big, actually I'll use a bigger brush. I've got two flat brushes, one's about an inch and the other one's that half inch. This is just raw sienna, so I'm just going to add some raw sienna where I think the water, water is, just to block it in really. for a minute. Go through there as well. Think of a colour, think of the colour, a bit of blue and some of that yucky green. Maybe not bad if that'll work, but no, that's the wrong type of green. Need is some sort of a sappy green, olive green. We can mix one up using still not dark enough, really. So we're trying to just want to put something down, really, just to get it. Get the flipping castle moving. I seem to have lost my shadow now, my reflection. So 
well, I've actually changed the, the colours, so let's bring it back if I can. So much, so much nicer doing paintings with no pressure. If you're not, one of the things was, if you're not too happy with what you just did, I want it, it's dull, so I want it to be brighter than that. So just clean water and a bit of tissue and you can lift it off and we'll come back, back to it. Let it dry, let it dry off, and we'll come back to that. The base tones there. Still going to add my little bit of castle. I'm going to let this dry off now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just make sure we've got something there, reflection wise. It's a bit of that burnt umber colour, isn't it? That I'm missing. It's better. Just adds a little bit more oomph, oomph to the reflection, I think. it dry and then I'll <clears throat> it is water so I better put some blue in. While it's damp it'll just squish along. Let it just let it um let it drizzle. I'm not fussed about that. Just use the brush strokes. Right, we'll let that dry and come back and attack it again. Let, well, let it dry off a little bit. I, I, I'm a bit loath to use the hairdryer. I need a cup of tea. It's too hot here. Well, my next little plan, I think I'm going to mix up some sort of tree, tree colour branches, Just tackle those, a bit of blue, burnt umber, still got some left, maybe a, quite a lot of blue, hmm. I want it to be a bit darker than that, and get some nice dark green, any green will do, any green will do, Trouble is I've got, whenever you introduce white, it has an obvious tendency to make the any other paints go a bit milky. So, a bit of a heads up there. Don't like using black, but if you've got any neutral, neutral tint, or dark, can, you can add it to the green mix. What I'm trying to do is get a dark, sort of greeny colour to. Um, I'm not going to use this brush, don't get excited. <laughs> no way. I'm not that brave. But I have got a couple of riggers here. That's a, a number, oh, that's a number one rigger. So what I tend to do is sit down for this. <laughs> um, smooth that out for Simmer. Just want to have a look at the big, big picture here. Don't know if I tilt with my lens now. Just a little bit. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, that's to say, now I'm actually sat down here, so I'm just going to start, mm -hmm. grab some of that 
really dark colouring. Add some twiggy bits to the tree using the rigor. It was really good eyesight, of course. Once you get a nice rhythm going, you can keep going. I think the, as I said earlier, the thing to have, don't forget you can put thing to do is to try and think of your hands your arm is straight and then with your fingers out wide that's the top of the tree sounds fun sounds simple but once you get going keep going <laughs> you get some really fine these are very focal side wear. <laughs> so if I don't get it right, it's all a bit blurry. Oh, this is brave. I'm actually going down. I'll keep. There's so many of them. Fanning out on big branches. Going up. Not too worried about it because we're going to put some twiggy bits, uh, green bits, some foliage on there. Foliage, that's about a word, Dave. Once the brush gets to a certain The paint rather comes off the brush, it's a nice fine line. I tend to keep going as long as I can. You get those nice wispy um, twigs at the top of the branch that we're going to have a go with in a minute. Got a horrible bit there. Ooh. A lot of difference. Something's got to happen. Glasses keep slipping down, so I'll get another. As I say, this is just just dark paint. I just wanted to do it in one one foul swoop. Doesn't look very nice, does it? Over there. Let's see if I can get a bit of. Clean water. <laughs> water then. Just dab it off with a bit of clean water. Can't do that in a credit. Who said that? Can't they? Right. And there is a branch that jiggles the feel. Not the sort of thing you, need, you can do really after a, a wild night out. Find loads of. Sort of a tree in here as well. Background tree. Bit too dark, really. But there's twigs and stuff going everywhere. All will become clear in a minute. I think there's a, a bit of a tree in there as well. Sorry if I'm mumbling. Didn't do a very good job there. Just gonna give that a quick squish. <laughs> to clear that way, that place. That area's got um, lots of water on it. 
Add a bit of yellow to the colour, I think. Just to brighten it out. No particular reason, but because I just think it's a little bit. The tree is looking a bit stale, a bit dark. So I've got some yellow in this palette, so I'll just dab a few bits on. From one extreme to the other now. Sort of a lemon yellow, which is really, <laughs> really strong. It's almost opaque, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's get this book tree looking a bit more, as I say. I'd like to say practice makes perfect with trees, but it don't. <laughs> they just get harder. And I'm going to add a few, rest my hand on them, add a few branches to help me. Oh, there's too much paint on this brush. Just doing the similar thing that I did over the other side. It's not crucial. It's just so that I know that there are some branches there. Definitely need some new glasses. Mm. I think the um, little bit of lemon yellow on the edge there quite helped quite a lot. It's a little bit of distance because what colour are trees? Green. That's a little bit of interest. Ready for the main event. I think we'll have another look at the. Um, I know it looks a bit wintry at the moment. Let's just tip my fan over. Hang on. Doesn't like being on the floor. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have another look at that water, see what we can add a bit. I think the lemon yellow will work quite nice initially. So, all my papers, all my work is curling. I'm going to make it nice and damp. Well, add a little bit of this lemon yellow for, for a minute, just, just, to, uh, just to warm it up. Sounds funny, but I just think it's, it's just a base colour. can go up as well. Too bad. Mm. Not sure how green, green that, that dark tree green is that I've been using. Not green, not green enough. So I'll add a little bit, sort of an olive green would be fine if you've got one. Sap green is another colour. Wanted to add a few darker areas to the to the pond. Pond? It's not a pond. It's a lake. Well, whatever it is. Just for a minute. And then add a few bits. Of, just thinking. I'm actually painting the shadow of the tree before I painted the tree, but. There you go. Let's put a few bits on. It might sometimes when it's the same here. 
when it's um, when you're doing this. Got a sprayer. Spray it and let the water, because I'm at an angle of about you know, 25, 30 degrees. Put some water on and just let it spray and it, it will run down. Mm -hmm. Now you can watch the paint dry, but it looks a bit daft at the moment because we haven't got all the the other bits bolted bolted in. Just let that settle itself down a minute. I screw up this cup too. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> One of the things I've been looking uh, looking at this. Uh, I like one of the arm colours I have in my armory is a thing called Horizon Blue. It's like cerulean, so I couldn't find the cerulean, so I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of that on the edge there, and I'm gonna put some in, in the pond. And in the sky, it's, it's a much, it's quite a strong blue, so I've got to be a bit careful. Just, I'm not going to leave it like that, but, and it will dry back as well. And I thought I might add a bit into the sky as well. This would be precarious. Loving this sky, it's such a, an easy one to play with because there's only all I'm doing is um, one color there's no blends or anything so it's been quite fun for that it's a few spattery bits here so I could try and blend those in for my tree days over here just add a little bit of extra tonal value Starting to paint right-handed again there, which is <laughs> well. If the cap fits. Wear it. Might be able to put a little bit of colour in there just to heighten it up. Move that dark. Yep. I want the sky at the top to be much. Well, not much is not just darker than the. I think I've picked it all up now. Give it a little bit of extra buzz. As I say, the water I just wanted might have gone a bit too mad there, but that's typical of me. <laughs> One thing's the next stage. I can find my little reference sheet. Where are you? There you go. Trying to add some nice green. I'm going to do the green, the foliage two ways. First one is just our normal sort of watercolour. <clears throat> Let me find a nice brush. I'm going to pick out, I'm just going to concentrate on the these areas here from the far bank. If I can find some paint, it might be handy. Oh, there you are. I've got a nice lemony yellow here, so I'm just going to drop some of that in. Just to establish The, back, the lemon yellow is very is all, it's quite an opaque colour, so guaranteed that it will cover most of the areas that are underneath. It almost says it's not a true watercolour, but. I'm mixing water with it, so it must be. I'm not going to touch this blue. I'm going to leave it until it's it's dried off considerably. Very good. 
Yeah, drop in some blue onto that. It's so like um. Ultramarine blue. I'm using this pointy brush. But if you've got a fan brush, just dab it in some blue. Just drop it into the the base of the yellow. It should form what blue that is, it looks a bit insipid to say the least. It's just to add some darks to the bottom. With the fan brush, if you give it a little push upwards, you'll get that sort of feeling of reeds. I'm not going to go too mad, just put a few in for now. Less is more. If you get the right amount of paint on the or can just lift it up a bit just let that work its magic for now as I say I like to do these in sort of stages this yellow bit in other words what I'm trying to say is let that dry off or go to another part of the picture and by then, the colours in your palette would have slightly changed, so you'd get that sort of different, different variety of um, greens and yellows. I think I'll just have a little go at this bit here as well. It's nice and damp, so I'm just going to too mad because I want to put a bit more effort onto the bridge as well so just drop a bit of that in take my brush clean it off find some what I thought was ultramarine but it's, that's not that's um more of a Prussian blue hmm. that's better that's ultramarine Just mixing in with a bit of that dark area of my palette. And I could just drop it in. Just gentle. Push it in. Let the water run. If it runs down, don't worry. That's fine. Using a fan brush, you get a nice variety. And uh, can interchange it as well. In other words, put the blue and add a little dabs of yellow on top of the blue as well. Use the brush at various angles that give you that impression of leafiness. And I've still got this really dark almost black green that I used on the trunks uh, branches over the other side so we can add some of those in just maybe. and they will soften down well I hope they will mm -hmm. take some of the edge off the brush See if we can flick it, flick it up a bit to give the impression that there's some reeds. Might have to do that later when it's dry. Might be better to sort of establish where they are at the moment. See, I've got a different, slightly different green here now, so I could just add a few bits onto there. That's fine. Very good. We've got this lovely. I'm going to do the foliage on over here. More or less the same 
same way I'm just going to use a bit of the the yellow look where the tree is on my image so if I'm up here I'm just going to say right there's something going on up here so I'll dab it in this is the traditional way of doing it I'll show you a different way and if you over the other side that may take the the angst out of oops I think that was a bit too much there out of doing trees. Still got that blue. I think I've remembered which one it is. Ultramarine. I'm just going to drop some of that into that yellow. It's a bit damp at the moment. So I'm chasing the, t the damp of the trees. Have fun with colour. I mean, that's the main the main thing. We've got the photo. We know what it looks like in pseudo real life. Not worried about the car, so I can tighten that up when it's dried off. Take the edge off the brush. Put a little few dibbles on. Try and leave a few eye holes, bird holes. It's just blue on there at the moment. That'll do. Um, if I get my little rigger, I don't know which one that is. I've still got a bit of that dark colour there. So take the edge off the brush. Squint the eyes up. Just put a few extra twig bits in there for now. Just noticed they've got a, a twig that's going nowhere. So I'll just dab a bit onto that. There you go. We'll let that dry off. And then I'll do some around that background area there. Mm. Should I'm just gonna tweak that down a bit, pull it down just to remind me that at some point I've got to put some shadow in there. Uh, what are those things called? Reflections, these go horizontal, just tease it in. That blue I'm not worried about because I'm going to cover that up with some of this green in a minute. Starting to pop, starting to come to life. As I say over here we'll do a different method of doing the trees to what we've done there. I think you'll find it quite fascinating. Meanwhile, two six. This being meeting is being recorded. Or is the audio being recorded? Let's check. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> anyway, crack it. Cracking on with this. Um, a couple of squiggly wiggly bits. Still a lot of work to do, but the process is there or thereabouts. What we're going to do is 
Let's have a bit of a tidy up. A bit of a tidy up, I think. I think my palette's dried out in all this heat. Nightmare, isn't it? It's got a big, got a little big uh, squeezy bottle. Oh, yeah. Let's try this one. A bit more accurate. Plenty coming out. Rehydration. Everything's dried in this heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just noticed a little. Could do with a little bit more. Blue in there. See what we've got. Bit of cerulean blue. Mm, one side. Managed to find it. Mm -hmm. And the other side, a little bit of ultramarine. That's cobalt, it's close. Ultramarine. A lot of these paint tubes now, they put different languages on. So when I come to look at it, I've got to decipher Russian, Polish, and. <laughs> God knows what it was. All I'm trying to do, all I want to do is just grab a little bit of yellow. I'll use it over there for a minute. A little bit of ultramarine. See if I can get a nice green. Not too bad. Ultramarine green does tend to be a bit. Hmm, what's the word? Ultramarine green, I suppose. <laughs> but if you've got the other greens I use are sap green and olive green. Sap green and olive green, you can add black to or neutral tint. <clears throat> and that'll give you lovely dark shadow green. The other way of doing it and I do it a lot, is raw, raw sienna, which is an awesome earth colour. I'm just going to drop a bit there. Too much water. I've got water with water everywhere here. Just put a bit of... Because I know it, there's green the other side. I don't know why I've got so much water on my brush. Touch of blue into that. No, 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 I won't. Need a bit of tissue, really. There you go. I'll put a hint of blue in there. This still needs to be a lot darker, doesn't it? If I can find. A little bit of blue, burnt amber, and we'll get some nice just dab it in. <laughs> Find my little flat brush. What we're gonna do. Let's just try and blend this area here a little bit. It's just a little bit of light white on there. I'm just looking at my reference picture and looking for some highlights. Is there? It's just out of shot. And my wall over here needs a bit more effort, I think. It needs to be teased out. Just 
lighten that shadow just a little bit. Blend it. Just blend the darks that I put in before. Still got some burnt umber around, so quite easily just drop it, drop a bit in while we're damp. I can't remember if there's a, oh, that's fine there, all stops there, so I want to add a little bit of lighter colour to that in the sec. Whoops, don't panic. Just, just look at the reference picture. We should be able to put a few. It's very akin to painting oils this way. Not that I've ever done it, but <laughs> if I was to do it, this is how I would be thinking about it. and blend some shadows just look for some highlights on the castle area it's just a bit of white gouache Think bricks really, some of that brick colour lines I put in there are a bit dark. So just want them to be more subtle. This area here. That'd be fine. Right, my next port of call is you like this. Not a lot. Let's pop that over there for a sec. Now, what the devil's all this, I think? These are pastels, sticks of pastel that I've scraped. If you just scrape them with a knife, you can get a nice... <clears throat> A nice dust, a nice dusty effect. So I've got green, a yellow, a couple of yellows actually. And a couple of earthy colours here. That was a greeny blue, earthy colours. What, what, what are we going to do with this, I say? Uh -huh. What we're going to do, do it, these trees, this area of tree over here, what we've done is I made, we've cut, if I get a cotton ball and put it into tissue, can you just, just I used handy andy type kish, tissue and just tape it up and then when you finish with them you can throw them away because they're quite handy and then we do is we dab it in the dust and just add to the trees because I just want light need more dust <laughs> And we just dab it on. Put some more yellowy one there. Don't worry about not having a lot of dust because it's only the 
first part of the process. Just so happens that the my trees are a bit sorry, not the trees, the branches are darker than I wanted them to be, but I'll live with it for now. grab a bit more. You can actually do, do it just by using it straight on if you've got the right colour or colour that you're keen to use. Not a one trick pony here mate. Look at all that. So yeah, so there's more ways of just lightly dab it on. Using the dabber, you should be able to get quite accurate with it. Surprising how, if you can think up a better way of getting it on, by all means do so. And once it's there, maybe I should put some Shall I put a little bit of bluey green on there? A little bit of dab of blue in amongst it. Don't worry about this being. The next stage is we're going to fuse it. If we get a the small brush, a nice rigger. We've got a nice rigger here somewhere. I'm going to use a rigger for a minute. And just with clean water, just make it damp. Probably have to sit down for this, and then you can just gently. Fuse it using damp brush. Take the edge off the water. And you'll find your it's a great way of getting foliage without well an alternative way to using your watercolours. It's sort of traditional. Anyway you don't want it, don't put water in, you can just blow it away. The areas that are damp, they sort of fuse into the paper, so they'll stay a bit longer. And it sort of spreads out. Sort of painting with pastel. You get some lovely effects. Subtle, very sort of Chinese -y sort of painting as well. It doesn't have to be a small brush, funny brush, it's a sword. Just to show that it, just shake off any wild access and just. Simply tease it on where the water touches it, it just fuses into the paper. You can get nice, delicate foliage on your trees. Just wiggle the brush around. Yeah, I like that. Well, that's the top top branches. Just let it sort of settle down. And any excess you just blow away. Next st stage is this area in here. I'm going to put another 
whole load of it there and a load there. Clever. It's a good effect, huh? it really does. Very interesting. Next, I'll put a few more mix up. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's a bit froggy this morning. Let's have a look at this. What about this tree in the background? I'm going to put a load more around here. So much dusty stuff. And perhaps a little bit more of the what you can do is, so I've made up, mixed up a few here. You can use them each different, uh, different color dust. It's quite good fun. This you never know what's. Oh, I was going to say you never know what's going to happen, but you got a rough idea. But maybe not for the. Oh, I don't know. I'm in an I'm in an R in thinking maybe it's good. Maybe it, it for me it works for the tops of the trees. Really good. Those little dusty feathery bits, and it's got some more green here. Let's try and make the background. Bit darker so that this tree stands out a bit different. So, say. just shake it on. Some bright yellow here, should have some fun with that. Find a different dabber. Change me dabber. Amazing. As I say, you've got the ultimate. Another tool that you can spray it on yourself. Direct. Okay. Careful, you can direct it in quite a good position. Right, yeah. Need a bit dark as well. Just use a bit of this bright yellow. You know. Follow the row of the tree. And this earthy colour. Bring in some darks, shadowy bits. Hide some of those branches a bit. So say, it depends what you've got in your um, palette, in your box of pastels that we all tend to, f right, I'm going to stop there, here's my little brush, see if I can manipulate a tree. <laughs> Don't think that, ooh, well, went a bit wild with the water there. Don't think this fan brush is particularly brilliant at this. Moving colour around, isn't it? The ultimate foliage experience. Definitely works. A round brush. Eight. 
bottom of the water off. Just dab it on. Can't make up my mind the best brush to do it, but you can see where I've put the blue, it's gone um, really that sort of earthy browny colour. Almost like an oil painting. Hmm. Got the rigor here and there. The paint sort of explodes when you touch the water on it. Don't think that brown ready colour was a good um I don't know, it's sort of going, maybe I could, let's have a little experiment, see if we can still manipulate it while it's damp, and just lift bits off, with a tissue, amazing, well, I hope you get the, get the idea. Um, lost my knife. Need to brighten that up a bit with some yellow. <laughs> Great fun. Gets amazing effects. The reason I was attracted, sort of invented, co invented it or attracted to it was these areas at the top where you get that very delicate tree sometimes some people struggle doing it with brush so using this sort of method I'm going to put a little bit of blue in if you've got a little sprayer let's take that off we can use our spray atomizer just to Fuse it even more. And they've got a different, a different sort of take on what we had over here. We see the difference it makes to the picture is stunning, astounding. There's quite a lot to do on this painting as it happens. That went too dark in there, so I need to lift. There's supposed to be a bit of shadow. Well, that's um, drying itself off. Put it on. Well, add some darker bits to my my water. This one I've got this lovely dark greeny colour. I think I need to use this this some um, sword brush. Make it nice and you get a nice sort of line with the start of the brushes. Just tone these blue down a little bit. And if you can find a line in your castle. It can give you a nice reflection. Same over here. Bit more water. Gradually build it up. Obviously, it'd be a bit darker where it meets the these are stored brushes, so 
who makes this one? Rosemary, it's one of the evergreen brushes that we're using for, well, they are actually oil brushes, but I've been using them for watercolors for a few weeks now. Don't go too mad. Make it like an enchanted castle. I think I could just soften that bit down there. And you've got the tip, the pointy bit. So it gives you a, you turn it up the other way perhaps. Get a few ripples, use the point. Lovely jubbly. What I'm gonna do is find that area there and just add a little bit. Maybe not tissue that off. Mm, kind of not worked as a reflection. So if I can tease it into the maybe. Almost worked. And that's that original yucky dark colour that I started off with ages ago, right at the beginning. So I can use it to if you recall it was yellow, blue, and a little bit of burnt umber to make it go black. What's that? Well let that chill out for a little while and come back and do some more. Let it dry off. Settle down. Looks good. Looks good. Let's have a just I've got a few more trees over here this almost looks quite nice <laughs> oh, dust, dusty but it could be a bit more greener I think um, get a bit of green a bit more fun I've got some different greens here I'm just going to use my um a knife and just gently squirt a few bits in. So, so this side is for don't need much. A bit green. Bury it. Try and bring it back into summer it was meant to be. Really weird. I've spent all these years painting watercolour and now I'm using pastels. It's a bit greener. Just you need to touch it. Anyway, you can have some fun with this at your own leisure. You might even work out some different ways of doing it yourself. Um, we've got a massive foliage area over here. So that's going to be find my palette. Come here. Come on, don't be shy. So I'm going to put a little base of it's just lemon yellow going right the way down. So 
I'm incorporating watercolour and the pastels in there. Should you drop that in? But why can't we, should we have a bit of fun here? And scrape some pastel straight into the damp watercolour. Why not? See what happens. And now it's dry on wet. Want of a better term. Hopefully we'll get lots and lots of little leaves, dark areas forming. Mm -hmm. A little bit of blue, I think. Cerulean. Well, that's the light blue. Big damp water. See if I can just touch that in. Too much water. Well, there's enough. I think there's so much water on it. it. Needs to go up here as well. Wow. This is a pretty scene. I think I might just leave that to do its bit. And let it dry off. Love it. <laughs> Just let that dry off, I think. And I've still got a little bit of foliage. Wow, well, I didn't mean to do that over here, so I'm just going to use a bit of what I thought was lemon yellow, but. Drop a few. Let's foliage over here. I'm just blocking them in because I need to know. It's a bit of lemon yellow there. Don't want them too bright because they're in the distance. Find a little bit of, if you've got any olive green, even a little bit of, a little bit of blue. Just drop it in while it's damp. Just want to leave a few bird holes. Da, da, da. Certainly got a variation of um, greens and I'm just using the brush tip and just sort of squishing it. It should just drizzle into the the lemon. Don't go too mad. A bit more in there. Just soften that down with clean water later. We'll even do it now. Looked a bit hard edges. <laughs> Oops, good paper. It's just, and I want to do a bit more over here as well. Which one? Just sprinkle a few bits over there. So variation of the theme. Make it wet and then use your brush, ah, not brush, knife and just sprinkle some green on. Gives that a lovely random foliage effect. I've got a dark green. These pastels, by the way, that I'm using were just um, a box that I had lying around. A little bit of that brown, I think. So they weren't, um, let's try the other way. They weren't design color, you know, colors by default or design. Just give it a little touch with the pastel. 
And stick a few lines in while it's damp. Gives it that sort of. Oops, which books are you out of that one? I think this is the, the most interesting colour. Just going to stick a few lines in because it's damp, it's sort of spreading really good, really nice. Maybe, yeah, be careful with that. Which one's that? Oh, it's over there. Hmm. Take that off. Let's have a look. Wow. Almost, almost tidied it up. The other thing I've got to do, of course, is tidy the castle up quite a lot, which is going to get. I need to rehydrate this blob of white paint I've got here. Let's see if I can find a clean brush. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. If it's really watery, then you won't get that lovely... It will dry back and the undercolour will come through, which... Sometimes you want. Just try with a flat brush. Hopefully it's not full of strange colour. It's not really hydrating very well. Now I'm just looking for extra highlights. I recall yesterday I could put a bit in there, I think. Move that over. There's a few bits of pastel that have bled across. Have a play with colour. Don't be shy. What we're going to do is get this pointy brush, dry it off a bit. Ooh, my palette has now leaked paint all over me. Which is a very nice bit. <laughs> Too much water about now. Try and find a little, some dark, what better with the rigor actually, thinking about it, I think I'll find one. All I want to do is put a few, um, um, sort of intimation of some bricks. This could be, as I say, it could take quite a while. But if you look at the, the image on your painting, you can see where the paint has sort of dried at different levels. What appears to be like dry, shady patches, just use them as bricks. Just gentle lines, try and get them all in the same. There'd be a line there. We don't need thousands of them. Just a few, your eye I put the rest in. It's 
point of firmness. Same over here. Find some bricks, just a light colour with the rigger. Make a row, a little row. <laughs> and gradually put a few in. Just a darker bit of the darker piece of the castle colour that I was using earlier, which is sort of a fleshy tone, wasn't it? Using the rigger is quite handy because it holds a lot, quite a lot of paint. The shadow ones will be slightly darker, won't they? So I haven't forgotten that there's a doorway in here. Just don't put my hands all over my it's dark. Something going on there. Some sort of door. And at the top. <laughs> I'm quite close to the image at the moment, so it's so I'm sat down working, but when you stand up and walk, move away, you get a better feel for what it really looks like. We've got loads of them. Just put a few in and it'll, it'll pop out. I must remember that this is a tunnel, so it needs some dark keystone areas. Tidy that up. Let's drag that down a bit. Just a matter of playing dark and light, really. Add a few. And the most important thing is just have a bit of fun. I might. Hmm, big sigh there. Might need to tighten it up. This rig goes a bit. Loose to say the least, it's not my favorite one. Get a few. A few bricks. Nice. Got a few straight lines in, I think. Over here, it's got a little, quite a dark, shadowy bit. So I'm going to just drop some bricks and make them up as you go along. Like I say it's not a photo. We're not producing photos. One thing we do need to find is a 
bit of wall reflection going down from here just a bit extra might be a bit dark It'll be okay well that's a bit of white to that I think I've got any left where hasn't leaked all over me while it's damp the same here Let's make this a bit lighter. It's very a lot of water, uh, a lot of water in that white, so it will, it will just ease back. Clean that. So I think this piece over here could do with a little bit of lightening up as well. Not a lot. Just a little tinge of white on it, just lighten it up a bit. Maybe a little bit of the beige colour in as well. Give it there. I want to get a feeling, that's the main thing. Let's have a stand back and have a little look. Probably need a bit more information on this, perhaps on the two towers. And some more shadowy areas. Need to tighten up the this bit here. Some of those um, top bits were a bit, oops, stick my hand in the paint, were a bit dark. Looking back. It'll dry. Tease itself back. You can actually put a few little white reflective bits on these that'll make them pop out a little bit if you don't like it later you can always just drop a bit now I've got the brush really long because it's um I don't want to put my arm in the go back over that in a minute. Just drawing with the river rigor really. Right, let that settle down. We'll get the kettle on. Seems to have dried off quite my finest hour, but I'm always saying that. <laughs> Find a little bit of reef colour, sort of a grey, bit of blue. My paint's dried out, it's so what so hot around here. Hmm. Just 
just going to pretend there's roses over here. Bit of burnt sienna, I think. Pop it in there. A strange brush, this. It's a number. It's a number six. Number six, eh? Which is fascinating because I didn't even know I had one. <laughs> Just put a few bits in. Hmm. It's got a really weird. Weird point on it. A Mr. Whippy. I'm going to have to I need to spray my palette. It's all spray my palette. It's all dried in. It's so hot here, isn't it? We're back to traditional watercolours now. Whether we like, like to or not. Happy Basil, yes dear. Helps me through the day. Don't like that. It's all a bit too dark. A little bit of. Don't know why. It's either too dark or too light here. I'm getting a bit. Oh dear. Whatever. Oh dear. Too much water, that's what. Da -da -da. Seem to have lost off my brushes. There they are. Just if I can find a little bit of s s olive green, sap green, any green I do. And a little bit of yellow to it. Just wanted to brighten up this area here. A little bit of dark on one side of my trees. It's trees gone all diluted. Why? The water, soften it down. It's gone really opaque there, isn't it? Lift a bit off. Probably need to tease that with a rigor later. <laughs> Stand back. It's a little bit of sort of a brainy grey mix. With a hint of 
red, burnt sienna even. Just wanted to add a little bit more onto that shadow. Same here. Now, use it. Same with some of these dark areas. Just want to lighten them up a bit more. Believe it or not, after making them dark, I've decided they're a bit too dark. Just a little flick with the rigger. See if we can introduce a few stone effects here and there. What I'm looking at is the where the paint's slightly dried. It dries and you can almost see like little little areas of brick so you can just dab a little bit of extra paint on them. I just thought some of these were a bit too dark. Almost not you the opposite, put some a little bit of white on, even in the, especially along the top there, it's what differentiate it a bit. It's a painting, not a photograph. It's, Add some brighter areas on here. Just do it quickly. We'll revisit that later. Tighten it up even more. Just makes it look a bit more like a like it's a bridge. Right, any bits on the water, any brightening up? Well, I've got a little bit of white on here. I'll stand up in a minute and have a little. little. Sometimes if you just use the, the rigger, just put a few highlights, reflections on the water, it can make all the difference. Oh, that is. <laughs> Can put some more, some further dark areas, bit of burnt umber. Did I miss the sky? <laughs> oh dear, maniac. Just put a few. Maybe a bit strong, a few extra darks in amongst darker shadows. You can even use your finger if you like, just tease them along and gradually build it up. I suspect there'll be some darker bits in here. You can spend days mucking about with this stuff, sort of stuff. Once you've got a load of um, dark, the good thing about a rigger, it holds quite a lot of water, so you can slowly, oops, slowly tease it. Oh dear, oh dear. If I can wipe that off now. It was meant to be. It's not too bad. 
think I'll add a bit more green to this area. Just say, look, look, mum, my tree's reflecting in the water. Then we'll let it dry. <laughs> Got the same issue over here, really. Think fishing with carp and tench and all kinds of things in that water. Might be able to get a little bit of extra shadow in amongst there. Not a lot. Mm, to be putting it the wrong way. Add a little bit of blue to it. makes it a little bit darker it's just this area here I like that colour. Not too bad. We'll let that tone down. Just let it dry off for a few minutes. See what it. Yeah, it's pretty as a picture. Looks nice in the shade. I had to shut the window. The oh no! Look, the sun's come over and it's made my picture all shady and interesting. How's about that? I'm not sure if there's anything more I was going to do or not. Really, um, find a bit of burnt umber. I think there's a bit left. Like it, mm. it's a bit wishy washy. So, say the heat in my um, little studio room is so hot, it's um, my paint's drying quicker than I can spit. No, we wouldn't spit, would we? Just going to add some touches here and there, just some darks really, just a few highlights perhaps as well, love that tree bit, looks like I could do with just extending a bit of clean water here just to, I nearly said muddy the, muddy the water but not quite quite the right term. Just make it look a bit more interesting. The houses have dried back quite nicely. <laughs> Got a bit of green here. A bit of light green. Put some pencil marks there to just wiggle the brush, put some shadow in. I think village, maybe a little bit more, more sienna floating around. I'm conscious that if you make it dark, it will make it come forwards and want it to keep it, want it to rescind, recede, rescind, resummit. Mm -hmm. 
Burnt sienna is a lovely colour because if you want to warm your picture up, a bit of burnt sienna works wonders. Don't think it needs warming up. This palette, it's, if anything, it's miles too hot up here. Try not to sweat. It's not easy painting with the sunlight on it like this. Just try and put some extra dark bits with the rigor. Worked really well just putting that touch of white up there. Ooh, that's a bit dark. <laughs> Something there as well, woody. Close that up. And as I said, there's a doorway here. So I'm going to make that nice and dark. Hint of a doorway. Just a touch of dark on some of these. Pretend stones. Get it right. There's the entrance there. I lost the entrance to the tunnel on more than one occasion. Put a little thing there. Try and find some shadows on the little bricks on the wall. <laughs> also, I think castle really, isn't it? Just use, use the tip of the rigger. There's a line there and a line there. Really, I'm draw, drawing with the rigor, with the with the rigor, pretending it's a pencil, really. But where these bits have dried back, they've sort of formed little brick shapes, which is lovely. Just stop me adding a load of wet paint, as per usual. Might want to put some little shadows on the tops there where they meet the inside. Just make them up a little bit tree. What's happening over here? Okay, yeah, and there's a lovely shadowy bit here. I'm sort of looking at the reference image. Pete Williamson, fellow of the Royal Astronomical, whatever they are, Association Society, a good fellow as well. He lives in Whittington and is always posting these daily walk around the village paint uh, paintings, photographs tantalizing me, teasing me to play with it. Look for a shadow on here somewhere. <gasps> a bit dark, never mind. Keep going. What's happening over here? Yeah, well, the shadow's that size coming from the from the left, so put some hint of stone up here. But as I say, you can spend as long a time as you like teasing little divots, little bits of info from the um, hmm, 
very good that um, using the pastel to create the, the foliage where it's a tree, doesn't it? Absolutely inspired. Just flicking the don't while it's staying dry anyway. Just with the rigger, trying to intimate there's some reeds here. Could use the um, fan brush, does a good job at this as well. It's doing it at random. I'm not actually really looking at what I'm doing, I'm just looking at the pointy bit of the brush and letting it do something. And it's a bit it's a bit yucky on that reef, but hey uh, am I bothered? Yes, I am bothered. Perhaps stick a reef uh, chimney on it. Break it up a bit. Chimney in the middle of the house. Yeah, all right. And as it's drying back, we can put as I say, as the rather as it dries you over the next day or whatever, you'll you'll see extra bits, and you think, well, oh, I need to put a bit more, a bit more info, a bit more, just touches up here and there. At the end of the day, it's a painting, not a photograph. So try and just tease that over. Put the brush on its side. Give it a flick. Sometimes gives us a nice. I don't know if there is a window there. There is now something there. Now I do know that there's a little pointy cross bit there. So I'm going to pretend I know about it. Put it in. There's actually one down here as well, but I've lost that in the shadow. A few more bricks heading into that dark bit. Not perfect, not a photograph. Boom, boom. And uh, I'm just going to add a few shadowy dark bits on the water using the edge of the brush, almost like a dry brush technique, because you always get some sort of, just for a laugh, I'll put the, a little, hmm, might do, put a little line there, because I'm Christian, so there's the cross, <laughs> and you can make or break a picture putting some of these extra dark lines in. I'm sat down quite close to the picture at the moment, so it's not obviously easy to see what I'm doing. And plus the fact I've got so much, the sun is right in front of me, so I've got that to play with as well. Go up, go up, scratch in a few. I think I can do more shadows on the left over here using this. It's not really a colour anymore, it's just almost dirty water. But it was as consequences. If you put a little black line somewhere, you end up having to balance it by going the other side, trying to find them. Too much wiggling, and you get an uneven edge, even put some, I don't want red, a bit of burnt sienna in amongst this, warms it up, it's so warm in here, all I'm getting is a dry palette, do it on the edge of the, the paper first, just in case it goes what too much paint or doesn't feel right. See it, we can build it up. 
forever. I think I'll put a little bit of more shadow there and then go away and have a look. Decide if I need put a few more bricks. This is just using the um, burnt sienna that's on the brush. I'm not painting thousands of bloody bricks, that's for sure. Up and down, a spriggle. Bit of fun. That one looks nice. It's got some nice bricks in here. Where they've dried. Maybe hint of something going on over here. Voila. Bring on Robin Hood. <laughs> The original brick colour is still there, that sort of yucky grey. So I can always add a too dark. Just flick it off the brush. A few extra bits at the top there. Any bits you're not sure of. Stop tiddling. Did tinkering. Ah, that bit there, yeah. Need to put something in there. And then say that I do put a frame around it. Did have one a minute ago. Oh, sat on it. There you go. Bit of Whittington Castle. Humdinger. This is the second video that I've done. The first one, the actual one hour demo, the picture is on the other side when it looks like like that, which is as good, but I just haven't finished. I'm taking it to the next sort of stage. It's much looser, but I need to tidy all that up, which on the one I've just done, the second version, <laughs> I have actually done. Oh, I think my camera just went haywire. Sorry about the reflections, but I can't do much better at the moment. Maybe I'll just do a little video, a little bit extra later when it's when the sun's dried. <laughs> Died? Dried? I've got dry on the brain. When the sun fades down a bit, looks really nice with those shadows. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm nearly done here. Um, oh yeah, I washed those um, houses out. <laughs> they just didn't look right. A uh, bit of paint. Uh, here we go. Bit of brush. Find a brush. Uh, perhaps now dropping thing. Oh my god, bits everywhere. Oh my. A nice little rigger. Might be able to. I think I'll just. Uh, bit of a. A smidgen of. Whatever colour that was. Miles too dark. Not now. A little bit of that. My water is dirty all yeah. It's pretty usual at this time of the stage of the picture. <laughs> That's a bit better. Put a dab of colour there. Talking to myself as usual. It needs a bit a bit more of that red. Don't know why I'm bothering with this, but makes it look a bit. I see what I've done. That goes over that. Push, 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 push. Go over there. Down a bit off. Maybe not. 
I don't quite know what I've done here. I want it needs to be redder. Just a little bit of rosy madder in, do you think? Hardly. Just add that to the burnt sienna. Right, let's put a No, I'm not going to get away with this. <laughs> Last of the summer one. No, mm. no, 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 no. I'm not going to have it. So I can't be mucking. This is only a demo. <laughs> so I can't be mucking about it. A bit of lemon yellow, crop it in. Little dark green, I stole out of the thanks to Mr. Sainsbury's. So I found an old packet of watercolor paints and Sainsbury's, so they had some nice. greens in so I'm just going to use them here and there. I think this tree needs sorting out. More of a rounded shape. That day. Get the rigger. Pretend we know what we're doing. <laughs> just had a few extra real darks in the bottom. Same up there. Oops, didn't mean that. Bit too, oh, I don't know, it'll faint, dry back quite nicely. Just put a little bit of sharpness in that. In there, I think they need to be more of a straight. A bit better. Not really. Because they're too big. So these lifting out. Same there. So what we're gonna do is add a teeny weeny bit of the paint's drying up here as I as I look at it. Dry back. <laughs> Add in a little bit of white, but it doesn't, it's not opaque, so it doesn't, it just adds a little bit of tone, but it doesn't, it mutes it down, but it doesn't stay. Bit more of that grey colour up there. I'm getting bored now. <laughs> Not unusual. Yeah, that do. That do. It's only a demo. The most important thing was these the variation of using. the pastel to scrape it on and do the trees. I, I kind of like that and I like that as well, but just goes to show there's so many different ways of doing the same thing. But the reason I like 
this is because a lot of people don't like doing trees or foliage but using this sort of method is makes it quite easy to get a, a nice foliage effect i think i'll call that a, a wrap for now yeah it's got a bit of character just like me a little bit of character <laughs> let's straight on we take it down a bit so it's a bit flat because it's a, I always paint at a funny angle just looking at it's a little bit oh crikey tried to paint with a brush with a plastic sleeve on which would be the first I just want to put um, a little bit of highlight on there and there a little bit down there that'll dry back quite nicely could almost put a smidgen on there as well squint me eye up give it a little bit of extra depth as i say we can you can play around with those for <laughs> ever and ever ever in a day but that'll do whittington castle after my mate Peter Williamson, Royal Society of, no, Fellow of the Royal Astronomical Society. Walkies, there you go.